The story begins with a shepherd in a world known as Otherworld. One night, he wakes up to the loud sounds made by his sheep. Upon inspection, he realizes that one of his sheep is missing. With courage, he ventures into the forest aided by a flashlight and passes through magical protectors created by fairies who guard a part of Otherworld. As he continues through the forest, he hears eerie cries from mysterious creatures that frighten him. Sadly, just as he's about to escape, one of these creatures pounces on him. The following day, a girl named Bloom arrives at Alfie, a magical school in Otherworld. She hails from the first world where humans live and are unaware of the existence of fairies with magical powers. However, she discovers that she possesses fairy magic abilities, which leads to an invitation to attend Alfia and learn how to harness her magical powers. At this moment, Blue needed to meet a senior student named Stella, who would help her meet Alfie's headmistress, Farah Dowling. However, instead of finding Stella, she encountered Skye, who had been watching her since her arrival at the school. When Skye offered his assistance, Bloom declined and continued her search for Stella. Skye's friend, Riven, teased him for always approaching new students. After finally meeting Stella, she accompanied Bloom to Dowling's office. On the way, Stella explained that they needed to keep Bloom's identity as the daughter of ordinary humans a secret. They wondered how Bloom had acquired magical powers and Bloom revealed her fairy lineage, which Dowling had mentioned when inviting her to Alfia. Stella also offered to lend Blue a magical ring that would allow her to visit her parents in the First World. In Dowling's office, Bloom was warmly welcomed and encouraged to consider Alfia as her new home. Shortly after meeting the headmistress, Bloom retreated to her dormitory room and made a video call to her parents in the First World. Her parents believed she was attending a university in Switzerland and kept asking about her school. Panicking, Bloom's roommate Aisha pretended to be a teacher and urged the students to go to bed, helping Bloom end the call. Grateful, Bloom explained that her parents thought Alfie was an international boarding school. Aisha was puzzled by Bloom's fairy abilities and considered the possibility of fairy ancestors. As Bloom walked past Stella's room and she noticed the light fairy trying on some outfits. Meanwhile, on the other side of the room, Tara Harvey and Earth Fairy and Musa, who could sense emotions, became Bloom's new roommates. Musa had headphones on to keep herself from feeling others' emotions. Besides the fairies, there were also humans training to become specialists who would help the fairies in their missions. Skye and Riven were specialist students learning martial arts, and their instructor, Saul Silva, treated Skye like his own son because he had taken care of Skye after his dad, Andreas, a talented specialist, died in battle. After their training, Riven secretly went into the forest beyond the magical barrier to smoke alone on a rock. There he stumbled upon the lifeless body of a shepherd covered in claw marks. He hurriedly reported his discovery to the school authorities. Not long after, Dowling and other teachers examined the body and suspected that the burned one, a terrifying creature from 16 years ago, might be back. They warned the students not to go beyond the magical barrier. The next day, rumors about the burned one's attack spread throughout Alfia. However, Tara, Aisha, and Musa chatted casually about it in the cafeteria, thinking it was just a wild creature responsible for the shepherd's attack. Meanwhile, there was a female student named Beatrix, an air fairy who wanted to meet Dowling in the headmistress's office. However, when she arrived, the headmistress didn't open the door. Dowling's assistant, Callum Hunter, told Beatrix that Dowling couldn't meet anyone at the moment. But then, surprisingly, Dowling suddenly opened her office door. Beatrix was taken aback and claimed to be a fan of Dowling, wanting to learn about Alfie's history. Dowling, though, suggested Beatrix research the school's history in the library as she was busy. At the same time, Bloom was thinking about how to control her magic. She remembered when her mother scolded her for spending too much time in her room and got annoyed. She dismissed her mother and closed her bedroom door. Deciding not to dwell on it, Blue decided to attend a school party, where she met Sky again, who still remembered her. Impressed, she asked him about the area outside the magical barrier in Otherworld. Sky advised her not to go beyond the barrier because it was dangerous out there. During their conversation, Stella showed up and called Sky her ex-boyfriend, revealing her lingering feelings for him and her discomfort with him getting close to other girls. Uncomfortable with Stella's presence, Sky chose to leave. On another occasion, Blue's curiosity about the world beyond the magical barrier led her to walk toward the forest. There, she surprised Aisha, who was swimming in a lake. When Bloom left the magical barrier and entered a spacious area, she recalled things that made her angry, including Stella's advice on using emotions to unleash her magic. She remembered accidentally causing a house fire with her fire magic. While thinking about this, Bloom managed to produce flames from both of her palms, making her excited. However, as the flames grew larger, she starts to panic, and she didn't know how to stop the magic. Aisha approached and tried to calm her down, but Blue inadvertently pushed her away with her fire magic, putting her friend in danger. Quickly, Aisha placed her hands on the ground and used water magic to extinguish Bloom's flames. 
Upon her return to Alfia, Aisha asked Bloom about leaving the magical barrier. Bloom apologized to Aisha for almost hurting her, and Aisha reassured her, saying that all fairies make mistakes. Bloom then shared a story about a conflict with her mother. Her mother wanted her to socialize more and even remove her bedroom door, which made Bloom angry. This anger led to her accidentally setting her house on fire due to her uncontrolled fire magic. That night, Bloom rushed to her parents' room to help her mother, who had fainted from the smoke. Luckily, her parents survived, but her mother suffered burns on her hands. Hearing the story, Aisha speculated that Bloom might be a changeling, a fairy baby swapped with a human baby in the first world, even though it's forbidden. She acknowledged that there might be fairies who do it. The changeling explanation piqued Bloom's curiosity and she started researching it online. Suddenly, Stella entered her room and offered to lend her a magical ring, asking if Bloom missed her parents. Later, Aisha, Musa, and Tara couldn't find Bloom in her room. Musa used her mental powers to discover that Stella knew something about Bloom's disappearance. Stella eventually confessed that she lent her the ring so she could return to the first world and meet her parents. Musa and the others were surprised, especially since using the ring required fairies to leave the magical barrier and go into the forest to find a portal connecting the worlds. Meanwhile, Bloom had already found the portal and created a door in a storage shed near her house. Carelessly, she left the door open while observing her parents from a distance. After confirming her parents were okay, Bloom entered the shed to read some old books but was startled by the growl of the burned one outside. Frightened, Bloom dropped Stella's ring, which fell into the shed's underground chamber, making a noise that attracted the burned one. Bloom tried to hide underground and retrieve the ring, but the burned one took it. In her fear, Bloom ran until she encountered Dowling, who opened a portal door for her. At that moment, Bloom saw Dowling easily defeat the terrifying creature. As Bloom arrived in other worlds, she saw her friends eagerly waiting for her, and they all quickly returned to their dormitory. Meanwhile, in her office, Dowling told Silva about the burned one which she had immobilized and secured in a distant barn within the forest. She wanted to understand why this creature had reappeared after being gone for over a decade. Dowling also mentioned finding Bloom, a changeling in the first world 16 years ago, coinciding with the burned one's appearance. She brought up the name Rosaline, who had hidden many secrets, making it hard for her to uncover the truth. On the other hand, Beatrix, concealed in a cloak and hood, secretly breached the magical barrier and approached the barn in the forest where the burned one was bound. She used her magic to wake up the creature. The following morning, Silva and Dowling went into the forest outside the magical barrier to check on the burned one Dowling had captured. When they arrived at the barn, they were shocked to find that the creature had vanished. In the dormitory, Bloom had just woken up while Aisha and the others appeared to have finished their morning routines. Tarot expressed concern about Stella not returning overnight. They were surprised when Stella suddenly entered the room and inquired about her magical ring. Hearing Stella's voice, Bloom approached and explained that the burned one had taken the ring. Stella grew upset, mentioning that her mother, the Queen of Solaria, a respected kingdom in Otherworld, would scold her for losing a royal heirloom. Aisha defended Bloom, reminding Stella that she was the one who had given her the ring. Stella couldn't deny Aisha's words and asked them to keep it a secret until she could figure out how to retrieve her magical ring. Meanwhile, Beatrix tried to meet with Dowlin while she was discussing something with Callum. Beatrix offered to be Dowling's personal assistant, but Dowling declined, stating that she already had Callum to assist her. Frustrated, Beatrix chose to leave Dowling's office. Not long after, Dowling gathered all the students in a circle of stones to test their magic abilities. Bloom felt sad because she still couldn't summon her fire magic. After the class ended, she talked to Dowling and shared the incident where she had almost burned Aisha due to her lack of control over her powers. Dowling explained that Bloom needed to clear her mind to truly master her fire powers. Bloom also asked about her status as a changeling and her biological parents, but Dowling was surprised by the question and couldn't provide more information. She advised Bloom to focus on her magic studies. On the training field, Sky was talking with Riven, but when he saw Stella approaching, he left Riven to meet her. Meanwhile, Riven approached a new specialist student named Dane, who was struggling with his training. Riven demonstrated some tips to help Dane catch up more quickly. Back to Sky, he patiently listened to Stella's story about losing her magical ring and her plan to retrieve it from the burned one. Before parting ways, she hugged Sky to show her gratitude for his willingness to listen. Silva, who saw this, approached Sky with a small laugh, thinking Sky was trying to get closer to Stella again. Meanwhile, Beatrix linked her arm with Riven on the training field. They had become close since their introduction in the library. Beatrix asked Riven to help her enter Dowling's room without being noticed by others because she believed that the headmistress of Alfie was hiding many things. Riven agreed with the condition that she would reward him. 
In the school cafeteria, Bloom and her roommate discussed the gossip about her being a changeling, which only made Bloom more curious about her biological parents. Soon Stella, accompanied by Skye, approached Bloom with a map and invited her to retrieve her magical ring from the burned one. Although the creature was imprisoned, Aisha and others worried about the safety of their friends who would face it. Skye approached Bloom and quietly shared what had happened the previous night, which made Stella jealous as she tried to show she was closer to him. Bloom, who hadn't responded to Stella's invitation yet, eventually agreed to Stella's idea. She bid farewell to her friends and headed to the stone circle. Aisha and the others were surprised by her decision, especially since she hadn't fully mastered her magical powers. And Stella thanked Bloom for taking responsibility. Not long after, Sky chased after her and suggested that there were other ways to get the ring back, but she insisted on going through with it. He also explained that Stella was just his ex-girlfriend and Bloom chuckled, saying she wasn't jealous since they had recently met. Afterward, Bloom walked away from Sky. In the headmistress's office, Beatrix, with Riven by her side, was busy examining Dowling's books because she felt that the headmistress was hiding the school's dark history. Meanwhile, Bloom opened some notes to practice her magic. Stella teased her for learning magic from a notebook and hinted that Bloom might be a changeling, not her biological parents' child. This angered Bloom, especially after Stella mentioned that Bloom had almost killed her parents. This provoked Bloom's emotions, and she accidentally unleashed her magic when she touched a container on top of a stone. Unexpectedly, Stella had said those things on purpose to trigger Bloom's emotions and enable her to use her magical abilities. Bloom felt delighted with her achievement as her magic began to work. On the other hand, Silva was discussing the burned one with Dowling. He expressed his intention to go outside the magical barrier with his team to search for the creature. The following day, Silva and his team left the magical barrier in a car to find the burned one. Upon reaching the forest's edge, Silva got out of the car to assess the situation and spotted a hooded figure near the barn where the burned one had been imprisoned. Just as he was about to return to the car, he heard the growl of the burned one. In the dormitory, Aisha had already woken up and tidied her bed. She accidentally read Bloom's notebook, which contained some of the techniques Stella had taught Bloom to master her fire magic. Aisha, on her way to class with Musa, shared her concerns about the notebook's contents, leaving Musa wondering why Aisha was so worried about Bloom. Aisha explained that it was normal because they were roommates. She also mentioned Muza's secret crush on Sam, a fairy with the ability to pass through walls who happened to be there. Aisha called Sam over and told him that Muza liked him. Sam felt happy and approached Muza, while Aisha decided to leave him alone. In the greenhouse garden, Tara and Dane seemed friendly and chatted about various topics after Tara had helped him escape from some seniors' harassment the other day. Unfortunately, Dane had to leave after receiving a message from Riven, who was with Beatrix in his dorm room. Skye, Riven's roommate, felt uncomfortable with a female student in their room. When Skye informed Riven that the Solarian army was hunting the burned one, Beatrix suddenly left, claiming she was going to the library. Back in Bloom's room, Aisha gathered the courage to caution Bloom about learning magic from Stella. Bloom was surprised that Aisha knew about it, and when Aisha explained that she had read Bloom's notebook, Bloom became annoyed. However, Aisha clarified that she only wanted to help Bloom, but Bloom firmly refused. While they were discussing this, Stella arrived and informed them that the burned one had been moved, and they needed to find it to retrieve her magical ring. Aisha tried to remind them that it could be dangerous, but they didn't heed her warning. Meanwhile, Muza was still in the garden with Sam, feeling comfortable due to his calm demeanor, unlike most fairies were humans she had met before. Shortly after, Muza received a message from Tara about Silva, who was chasing the escaped burned one, and she quickly left Sam behind. A while later, Bloom and her four roommates were outside the magical barrier in the forest. When they reached the area near the barn, Musa sensed negative emotions and walked into the forest, followed by Tara. Meanwhile, Bloom, Stella, and Aisha entered the empty barn. Stella looked frustrated as she couldn't find her ring. On the other side, Musa and Tara continued walking through the forest until Musa screamed upon seeing the bodies of specialists with horrifying claw marks. Bloom and the others in the barn heard the scream, prompting Aisha and Stella to rush out, ignoring their friend's warning. Meanwhile, Musa and Tara, while observing the injured specialists, discovered that Silva was still alive. Aisha and Stella joined them, but Bloom had not arrived yet. Aisha hurried back to the barn to find her friend. Tara asked Stella to assist Aisha while she and Musa attended to the injured Silva. As for Bloom, she followed the voice calling her until she heard the burned one's growl. This allowed her to focus and unleash her fire magic, burning the creature before it could attack her. Aisha, who witnessed this, felt relieved that Bloom had gained control of her magic. Bloom approached the charred burned one to retrieve Stella's magical ring. At the same time, Tara helped Silva by giving him an herbal remedy to heal the wounds caused by the burned one's attack. 
Meanwhile, Stella, instead of searching for Bloom, returned to Alfia and informed Skye about her recent experiences in the forest. Soon after, all the students were surprised by Silva's arrival, supported by Musa and Tara. Dane, who saw this, helped Tara take Silva to the infirmary. Meanwhile, Beatrix rushed to Dowling's room to inform her about Silva's condition, leading the headmistress to leave the room with Callum. After that, Beatrix attempted to use her magic to open the secret door in Dowling's room. In the greenhouse, Silva received treatment from Professor Ben Harvey, who was Tara's father. Silva then informed Dowling and Callum that he had seen a hooded figure in the forest, possibly the one who had released the burned one. Back to Beatrix, who was still in Dowling's room, her actions were eventually discovered by Callum, who arrived and explained that Dowling had sealed the secret room with powerful magic. He also realized that Beatrix had released the burned one to distract Dowling, making it easier for Beatrix to access the headmistress's room. Despite being caught, Beatrix remained calm and suggested they work together to uncover the secrets Dowling had hidden for 16 years. Back in the dormitory, Aisha, who had returned to her room, informed Bloom that Silva had received treatment from Ben. Shortly after, Stella, accompanied by Skye, entered and asked about the whereabouts of her ring. Bloom returned the ring and intended to share her difficulties in facing the burned one, but Stella ignored Bloom's story and chose to leave. Skye stared at Bloom intently before he also left after Stella called for him. As Bloom prepared for bed, Aisha asked why Bloom had gone to search for the burned one alone. Bloom confessed that she could sense the creature's presence. During their conversation while Bloom was speaking, she suddenly fell silent with white eyes, causing Aisha to panic and try to snap her friend out of it using her powers. At the same time, Bloom had a vision of her past as a baby, left in the first world by an elderly fairy woman who asked Bloom to find her. Fortunately, Bloom regained her senses and shared her vision with Aisha. The next morning, curious about her vision from the previous night, Bloom began searching for the figure in various old school photos. As she couldn't find the person she was looking for, Aisha thought that Tara might be able to help because Tara's father was a prominent professor at Alfia. Bloom agreed with Aisha's idea, and the two of them entered a class to attend Dowling's magic lesson. In class, Dowling instructed several students, including Beatrix and Bloom, to use their magic. Both of them appeared to complete Dowling's challenge successfully. Unfortunately, Aisha failed to perform her water magic, leaving her embarrassed and frustrated with herself. She told Bloom that she was just tired, but Bloom felt guilty for keeping Aisha busy helping her. After class, Beatrix continued to press Callum to open the secret room in Dowling's office, and he finally agreed because he was also curious about the headmistress's secret room. Meanwhile, in the cafeteria, Musa and Bloom, having lunch together, discussed their concerns about Aisha's unusual struggles in controlling her magic. Tara joined them shortly after, and Musa chose to leave when she saw Sam arriving at the cafeteria. Bloom then asked for Tara's help in obtaining the old school yearbook and Tara agreed, especially since her father was busy taking care of Silva, making it easier for her to sneak into her father's office. On the other hand, Sky visited Silva in the greenhouse who hadn't improved despite receiving treatment. Silva explained that the only way for him to heal was to kill the burned one that had attacked him. Hearing this, Sky became increasingly worried about the man he had come to regard as his father. Silva tried to reassure Sky by mentioning that Marco, the top specialist graduate from Alfia, along with his team, had been sent to track the whereabouts of the burned one. That night, all the students were celebrating the annual party held in a building that used to be the headquarters of the specialists and fairies for discussing war strategies. In this era of peace, the building was no longer in use and had become a regular hall for parties and other events. After entering the room, Musa separated from her group to meet Sam, while Tara appeared to be chatting with Dane. Meanwhile, Bloom and Aisha were playing a game of throwing a ball into glasses filled with beer with a drunk Sky and Riven. When it was Aisha's turn, she and Bloom planned to cheat by shaking the beer in the glass, so that Riven's thrown ball wouldn't land inside. Unfortunately, Aisha ended up causing the beer to splash in Riven's direction, making him angry. Feeling guilty, she apologized and left them. Shortly after Aisha left, Riven mentioned how Bloom was more fun than Stella. He also told her that she resembled Stella's former friend named Ricky, who had once approached Skye. Out of jealousy, Stella intentionally blinded Ricky and Bloom, who heard the story, was shocked by it, and decided to go after Aisha. As Bloom tried to find Aisha, she entered a room where she discovered a picture featuring the fairy woman from her previous vision, along with Dowling and several Alfie alumni. Bloom snapped a photo of the picture, and to her surprise, Beatrix suddenly appeared in the room. Beatrix suspected that Bloom was also interested in Alfie's history, and extended an invitation to become friends. Curious, Bloom inquired about the wound in the photo, but Beatrix lied, claiming not to know her. Once she reunited with Aisha, Bloom showed her the photo of the fairy woman standing beside Dowling, suggesting that their headmistress likely knew who the fairy woman was. 
Bloom also expressed her intention to meet Dowling as soon as possible to begin unraveling the secrets from her past. Meanwhile, Beatrix was seen with Callum in Dowling's room, attempting to open the secret room protected by powerful magical defenses. Beatrix mentioned to Callum that Bloom had started searching for a fairy woman named Rosaline. Callum, who also knew who Rosaline truly was, realized that he and Beatrix needed to enter Dowling's secret room before Bloom discovered more about her true identity. Unfortunately, Callum couldn't remove the magical barrier, so Beatrix urged him to break it, allowing her to pass through. Callum was affected by the magical barrier, while Beatrix casually entered the secret room. Inside, she found an object protected by a powerful magical shield that she couldn't penetrate. Realizing she couldn't do anything, Beatrix left and killed Callum, turning him into dust to prevent him from reporting her actions to Dowling. At the same time, Dowling along with Ben expressed concern for Marco and his team who were on a mission to capture the Burned One. Ben reassured her, stating that Marco's team was the best and that there was no need to worry about the specialists. A while later, Bloom approached Dowling, showing her a photo of Rosaline on her phone. After Ben left, Dowling informed Bloom that the woman in the photo was Rosaline, the former headmistress of Alfie before her. When Bloom mentioned that she knew Rosaline was the one who brought her to the First World, Dowling claimed not to know anything about it. Bloom requested to meet Rosaline as the fairy woman had asked for in a previous vision. Dowling then revealed that Rosaline had long since passed away. Hearing this news, Bloom's emotions became even more chaotic. She went to the stone circle, where she cried and vented her anger by using her fire magic. She was furious at not being able to find her birth parents. Sky, who intended to go to the forest beyond the magical barrier, accidentally spotted Bloom at the stone circle. He approached her and asked about her condition. She then confided in him about being a changeling and her struggles to find her birth parents. Sky tried to comfort her, sharing that he had also lost his biological father when he was young but wouldn't let Silva, who he considered his father, die. He planned to go and kill the burned one that had attacked Silva to save him. As Bloom sensed the presence of the burned one in the forest near the magical barrier, Sky ran outside the barrier, and she followed him into the forest. Meanwhile, at the party venue, Stella asked Riven about Sky's whereabouts. Riven, who was drunk, mentioned that Sky was with Bloom, which angered Stella. Riven also revealed that Bloom was a changeling, which shocked her, as she had just learned about it. Shortly after, Stella and others received a message about the burned one being in the forest through their phones. Turning back to Sky and Bloom, they were running deeper into the forest, fully aware of the presence of the terrifying creature lurking nearby. They decided to set up defenses just in case the creature attacked. Unbeknownst to them, the burned one was poised above, ready to pounce on them. Fortunately, Stella came to their rescue, moved in her light powers. She asked Bloom and Sky to close their eyes, and then unleash a blinding light. Terra joined them, using her earth powers to summon plant roots that bound the burned one. Aisha and Bloom combined their water and fire powers to attack the creature, until Sky managed to stab it with his sword. The creature seemed lifeless for a moment, but Muzo warned that it wasn't dead. True to her words, the Burn One rose again to attack. Luckily, Dowling arrived and used her powerful magic to finally vanquish the creature. After the students returned to school, Sky visited Silva, whose condition was improving following the Burn One's defeat. Silva was both upset and proud of Sky for risking himself. He hugged Sky and expressed his belief that Sky's father would also be proud of him. Meanwhile, Bloom and her friends received a scolding from Dowlin for leaving the magical barrier. After her reprimand, the headmistress left them with a smile. Musa, who could sense Dowling's feelings, told her friends that despite the scolding, the headmistress was also proud of their actions in the forest. When the girls returned to their dorm room, Tara, feeling content, remembered her close moment with Dane. However, her happiness was shattered when she saw a social media post by Beatrix, where Dane was speaking poorly of Tara in front of Beatrix and Riven. Tara felt hurt and used by Dane, causing her sadness. In the headmistress's office, Dowling discussed Bloom's inquiry about Rosaline with Silva and Ben. She had to lie and say that Rosaline had passed away. Ben was confused about why Dowling had to lie, but Dowling didn't want Bloom, who had the strongest magic in Otherworld, to meet Rosaline as it could disrupt the world. Rosaline was currently imprisoned by Dowling in a secret room protected by powerful magic. On another occasion, Dowling and other teachers began investigating Callum's death. While examining the headmistress's room, Dowling found a magical mercury near her secret room and used it to trace the fingerprints of the killer. They discovered that Callum's murderer was likely a fairy who might be at Alfia. Meanwhile, news of Bloom's identity as a changeling had spread throughout the school, making her even more popular. Even Beatrix seemed jealous of Bloom's popularity. Riven and Dane, who were with Beatrix, were curious about the meaning of Bloom's nickname. Beatrix explained that a changeling was a dangerous fairy it provoked. 
Raven laughed in disbelief, especially since he and Beatrix were the ones spreading rumors about Bloom in the school. At the same time, Bloom and her friends went to meet Aisha, who had taken over Callan's role as Dowling's assistant. Bloom tried to hide her discomfort with all the rumors circulating about her, but Musa could tell that she didn't like the rumors. Outside Alfie's entrance, Stella, along with Skye, waited for her mother, Queen Luna of the Solaria Kingdom. As the heir to the throne, Stella couldn't escape her mother's high expectations and Luna would often punish her for her mistakes. When Luna and Stella entered Dowling's office, Aisha, curious about the purpose of the Queen's visit, eavesdropped on their conversation. They discussed Callum's murder by a fairy. After finishing her duties as an assistant, Aisha returned to the dorm and informed Bloom about what she had heard during Queen Luna's visit. That night, all the students gathered for a meeting with Luna, but Bloom decided to seek information about Rosaline. She asked Aisha for permission to go to the East Wing. Unbeknownst to her, Beatrix observed Bloom's movements and followed her out of the dormitory. When Bloom arrived at a warehouse, she was surprised to find Skye following her. In the auditorium, Luna delivered a speech about the appearance of the Burned One, which posed a danger to everyone. Dowling was seen checking all the students, making Musa suspicious. She attempted to read the headmistress's thoughts. In a corner of the room, Silva and Ben were on guard. Musa understood that the three of them were searching for the student responsible for Callum's murder. Back to Bloom, she was still busy searching for old school records and photos in Sky, intending to help her unexpectedly found a photo of his father with Rosaline. He was surprised to discover that Rosaline was his father's commander. Shortly after, Beatrix and Riven arrived and offered to help Bloom, but she declined because she was upset with Beatrix for intentionally uploading a video on her social media that hurt Tara. Beatrix, not accepting this, asked Bloom to scold Riven who had spread rumors about Blue being a changeling. Hearing this, Skye got angry and took Riven out of the warehouse, regretting Riven's change in behavior after associating with Beatrix. In the warehouse, Beatrix kept pressuring Bloom to tell her what she wanted from Rosaline, but Bloom remained silent until Beatrix suddenly discovered a secret room within the warehouse. After successfully opening the room, they both entered it. While Bloom was busy searching for information from some files, Beatrix quietly used her magic to deactivate Bloom's phone. At that moment, Bloom began to feel desperate and suddenly mentioned that Rosaline might be in a place called Aster Dell, which surprised Beatrix. When Bloom was about to leave the room to find a map of the other world, Beatrix informed Bloom that she knew the location of Aster Dell and invited her to go there as soon as possible. Bloom refused because she needed to return to school to avoid arousing suspicion among the teachers, but Beatrix suggested that Bloom go to Aster Dell that night. Shortly after, Beatrix picked up Bloom, who had agreed to go to Aster Dell, using a surveillance car that Beatrix had previously incapacitated. At Alfia, after the meeting with Luna had ended, Aisha, Musa, and Tara discussed the unsolved Callum murder case. They were also concerned about Stella, who seemed distressed after the Queen's visit. Aisha then revealed that she had overheard a conversation in Dowling's office in which Luna was angry with Dowling because Stella's magic was not developing rapidly. This made Stella gloomy and she locked herself in her room. Not long after, Skye, in a panic, suddenly arrived and asked about Bloom's whereabouts. Aisha tried to calm him down by saying that Bloom was in the East Wing, and Skye remembered that Bloom was staying with Beatrix in the old warehouse. Skye quickly went to look for Bloom while Stella approached him, angry that he didn't have time for her. Skye, not wanting to argue with Stella, chose to leave her. Meanwhile, Aisha and the others went to Dowling to ask for help in finding Bloom as soon as possible. Tara also mentioned that they knew Beatrix was Callum's murderer since she was absent from the previous meeting. Now they had to find Bloom, who had disappeared after she was last seen with Beatrix before Beatrix did something terrible to her. Turning back to Bloom and Beatrix, they had arrived in a desolate land where Beatrix appeared to be gathering her strength while Bloom had her back turned to her. Bloom realized this and thought Beatrix was about to attack her. Unexpectedly, Beatrix used her power to lift the magical barrier that covered Aster Dell, revealing the destroyed city. Beatrix revealed that she was born in Aster Dell and Bloom might have been born in the same city as her. In the past, after the Burn One attacked the city, Alfie's troops came to hunt down all the creatures. Unfortunately, the troops didn't care about the safety of the inhabitants when they used their magic to kill the Burned Ones, causing all the residents to disappear along with the terrifying creatures. Beatrix, who was still a baby, was saved by Rosaline and entrusted to her friend. Beatrix claimed that she could remember all the events in Aster Dell because Rosaline had implanted those memories in her. She had also seen Dowling, Silva, and Ben during the events. Beatrix tried to convince Bloom that all the teachers at Alfie had been hiding their dirty secrets for years. Bloom still didn't believe everything Beatrix was saying, but Beatrix reiterated that Rosaline was not dead, as Dowling claimed because Dowling had intentionally locked Rosaline in a secret room. 
and Beatrix wanted to free Rosaline as soon as possible. After Beatrix finished her story, she and Blue decided to go back. However, in the middle of the journey, Beatrix suddenly stopped her car and attempted to flee when she saw Dowling blocking the road. At that moment, Beatrix, who was about to run into the forest, was quickly incapacitated and captured by Dowling. Bloom tried to stop Dowling's actions because Beatrix hadn't harmed her, but her actions were halted by Silva and Ben. When Bloom arrived back at Alfia, Aisha, Sky, and the others felt relieved to see their friends safe. However, Bloom expressed her frustration with Dowling for capturing Beatrix. Aisha and the others tried to explain to Bloom that Beatrix had killed Callum. Unfortunately, Bloom didn't want to listen to her friends, especially because Dowling had deceived her so much. Upon learning that Beatrix was imprisoned, Bloom went to see Dowling and tried to explain that Beatrix hadn't harmed her at all. However, Dowling had no intention of releasing Beatrix, so Bloom became frustrated and chose to leave the headmistress's office. Shortly afterward, Dowling called Bloom's parents in the first world to make sure that Bloom hadn't told them anything about the events at Alfia. After confirming that Bloom's parents were unaware of anything, Dowling felt more at ease. On the other hand, Stella was forced to leave the Alfie dormitory after Luna insisted she return to the kingdom. Luna didn't even allow her daughter to say goodbye to her friends. Sometime later, Beatrix, who was still in prison, deliberately shouted, making it seem like Dowling was torturing her to get attention. When Dowling arrived, she asked Beatrix to tell Bloom what she had told her earlier, but Beatrix ignored Dowling's request and continued screaming. Meanwhile, Bloom secretly attempted to enter the warehouse where Beatrix was held captive, but she was surprised by Dane, who offered to help her. Dane revealed that he was assigned to guard the warehouse door the following night to ensure that Bloom could enter and free Beatrix. On another occasion, Bloom felt that she couldn't move freely as she used to, especially since Skye was constantly following her. Even Silva and Dowling continued to watch her every move after her departure with Beatrix. Unexpectedly, Skye received a task from Silva to get closer to Bloom and spy on her, despite still being concerned about Stella's sudden departure and Riven's frustration because Beatrix, his girlfriend, was imprisoned by the school. Sky tried to convince Silva that Bloom was not responsible for all the recent issues at Alfia, but Silva insisted that Sky continue doing it. Turning to the past, Silva and Andreas were in the forest engaged in an argument. Silva became frustrated because Andreas always acted superior and belittled others easily. Shortly after, Rosaline arrived with Dowling and Ben. Appearing pleased with orchestrating events and known as a strict headmistress due to her rigorous student training, often causing many students to quit their training. Returning to the present, Dowling and the teachers were watching a video of the students' training when Marco suddenly arrived, his body wounded. They were shocked by his injuries and Ben quickly went to fetch herbal remedies. Marco explained that he and Nora had seen many burned ones around the school. Silva suggested contacting the Kingdom of Solaria for assistance, but Marco revealed that all the royal forces had been recalled by the kingdom. Dowling suspected this was because Luna was upset with Alfie due to Stella's stagnant magical abilities. After learning about the burned ones near the school, all Alfie's students trained diligently to prepare for potential attacks, especially since they no longer had the support of the royal forces. Meanwhile, Tara had transformed Stella's room into a lush garden, and Aisha observed Bloom receiving a mysterious message, making her suspicious of Bloom's intentions. When Aisha offered to talk to Bloom about her concerns, Bloom left the room. She shared her suspicions with Musa and Tara, noting that Bloom had changed and seemed to align more with Beatrix. Later that night, Bloom returned to the warehouse to meet Dane, who had incapacitated the other guards, allowing her to enter where Beatrix was imprisoned. Bloom questioned Beatrix about Callum's death and Beatrix admitted to killing him while attempting to free Rosaline. Beatrix then urged Bloom to free Rosaline and help the former headmistress of Alfie regain her powers within the stone circle. Beatrix tried to convince Bloom that Rosaline was not an evil fairy, contrary to what Dowling and others had claimed. Leaving the warehouse, Dane handed a fairy battery to Bloom and explained that he considered Beatrix a friend because she accepted him with all his flaws. To Bloom, Beatrix held the answers to her questions about her true identity. Without hesitation, Bloom headed to the stone circle to restore Rosaline's fairy powers. However, her plan was interrupted by Skye, who appeared on the scene. In a hurry, she concealed the object inside a book. Skye explained that he had been tasked by Silva to keep an eye on Bloom, but he sensed that Bloom wasn't cooperating with Beatrix as Silva had feared. As Skye approached and grew suspicious of the hidden object, Bloom attacked him until he lost consciousness, then she quickly left the stone circle. Back in the dormitory, Musa finally found Stella, who had been hiding in her room using her light magic. Stella tearfully confessed that she had fled her kingdom due to constant pressure from Luna. She asked Musa to keep her presence in the dormitory a secret. 
Meanwhile, Lunar confronted Dowling and accused the headmistress of Alfie of hiding her daughter at the school, blaming her for Stella's disappearance. At the same time, Aisha and Tara pressured Dane to reveal Bloom's plans related to Beatrix. Dane eventually divulged all the details of Bloom's schemes after succumbing to the magical pressure from Aisha and Tara. Switching to Marco, who was undergoing treatment, he received an urgent video call from Nora. She was in pain and had broken her leg while trying to evade a burned one attack. Nora reported that all the warriors had been killed and Marco grew worried, urging her to get inside the magical barrier immediately. Unfortunately, while the video call was still in progress, she was swarmed by several burned ones. Marco and Silva watched helplessly as numerous burned ones lurked around Alfie. Meanwhile, Aisha and Tara sought out Blue to convince her not to free Beatrix. However, Bloom expressed her distrust of all the teachers at Alfia after Beatrix's capture. Tara defended her father, believing that the teachers had always protected Alfia's students, when Aja persisted in trying to dissuade Bloom, and enraged Blue nearly used her magic against her friends. Thankfully, she regained her composure and decided to give the fairy battery she had to Aisha before leaving them behind. Aisha and Tara returned to their room and Stella, who was with Musa, stealthily reappeared. Unaware of Stella's presence, Aisha confided in Musa about Bloom's changing behavior, her determination to free Beatrix, and her obsession with Rosaline. Stella, unable to hold back, revealed herself and proposed a solution to address the situation, surprising Aisha and Tara at her return to the dormitory. Simultaneously, Bloom had a meeting with Dowling, who had plans to hunt down the burned ones lurking around the school. Bloom questioned Dowling about the truth concerning Rosaline and her own birth in Asterdell a city that had been destroyed by Dowling, Silva, and Ben. Dowling confessed that Rosaline had influenced her and other Alfie teachers to destroy the city, eradicating the burned ones along with its inhabitants. Dowling expressed remorse and apologized to Bloom, who then inquired about her arrival in the First World. Dowling admitted not knowing the reason, as Rosaline had concealed many secrets. Bloom insisted on freeing Rosaline to uncover the truth, even though Dowling warned it could endanger the other world. Dowling then offered to help Bloom find answers without releasing Rosaline. In a different place, Tara and Musa returned the fairy battery to Bloom and pledged their assistance in freeing Beatrix. Stella also revealed herself, surprising Bloom. Bloom questioned Aisha's absence and Tara explained that Aisha disagreed with the idea of freeing Beatrix, who had killed Callum. After some time, Bloom and her friends successfully infiltrated the warehouse and pretended to release Beatrix from her prison. With Beatrix's cooperation, they stood before the door of Dowling's secret room, protected by guardian magic. Beatrix intentionally pushed herself into the magical barrier, causing her to lose consciousness. Unbeknownst to her, Bloom and the others had only pretended to trap Beatrix to gain entry into the secret room. Meanwhile, as Dowling was preparing to unveil the magical barrier with her troops, Aisha rushed to inform her that Bloom and the others were attempting to free Rosaline. On the other hand, Bloom and her friends had reached an underground corridor, discovering the location of Rosaline's imprisonment. Rosaline, aware of Bloom's arrival, requested her to use her magic to break the magical seal. Bloom didn't hesitate and placed her hand on the magical barrier, freeing Rosaline, who was now in a weakened state. Rosaline then asked Bloom to channel her magical power into the stone circle. Tara and the others left the secret room after seeing Bloom taking Rosaline away. To their surprise, Beatrix, who had lost consciousness, was nowhere to be found. At the same time, Dowling, Ben, and Aisha arrived just as Tara and the others were exiting the secret room. Dowling and Ben were visibly upset with their students, ordering them to return to their dorm rooms. Stella felt annoyed with Aisha for reporting to the teachers. Dowling then examined the underground corridor, discovering Rosaline's escape. She rushed to the stone circle but found it empty. In response, she urgently contacted Silva to be on high alert because Rosaline had been freed. In the dormitory, Ben punished Tara and the others by confining them to a room. Tara attempted to explain their actions in freeing Rosaline due to the Alfie teacher's cover-up of events in Asterdell. However, Ben ignored her and sealed the door using magic. After he left, Aisha expressed her frustration with Bloom's selfish actions, believing that Dowling must have had a valid reason for imprisoning Rosaline. Meanwhile, Bloom and Rosaline reached the stone circle through a secret path passing by the old cemetery. While Rosaline channeled her power, Bloom inquired about Asterdell's history. Rosaline explained that they didn't evacuate the inhabitants of Asterdell, but instead wiped them out because they were evil blood witches who gained magical powers through human sacrifices. Rosaline believed that the Burn Ones attacking Asterdell was an opportunity to eliminate both the creatures and the blood witches. Bloom realized she couldn't have come from Asterdell since she possessed strong magical abilities without resorting to human sacrifice. 
Calmly, Rosaline confirmed this and revealed that when Bloom was a baby, she was kidnapped by blood witches from her birth parents, who are still missing. She also noted that Bloom's exceptionally strong magical powers made her a target for both blood witches and burned ones. In a forest, before Sky could inquire about Asterdale from Silva, they were interrupted and had to return to their guard duties upon hearing noises from the school. Simultaneously, a power outage occurred at Alfia, causing panic among the students. Sam, who was locked in the girls' dormitory, broke through the wall to investigate and encountered burned ones inside the building. Fortunately, Sam managed to break into Muse's room with the others before facing further attacks. At the Stone Circle, Rosaline approached Bloom, asking her to use her magical powers. However, Bloom hesitated suddenly. She doubted if she could trust Rosaline, especially since Rosaline was hiding from everyone at Alfia. What made things more complicated was that Rosaline was the fairy who had left Bloom in the first world over a dozen years ago. Rosaline argued that she had brought Bloom to the human world on purpose so that she could hide from the dangerous burned ones, especially with the love and protection of Vanessa and Michael. Soon after, Bloom received a frantic message from Stella about the burned ones entering the school. Panic washed over her and she rushed to Alfia. There she met Skye, who was also racing towards the school. Meanwhile, Musa looked sad and could sense Sam's pain, but she and the others were trapped in their locked room. Outside, the specialists started to disperse and Riven entered the greenhouse. Dame pleaded with Riven to help him create a potion to save Beatrix. Initially, Riven refused because Beatrix was a murderer, but eventually he felt compassion and agreed to assist Dane. Back at Alfia, Sky expressed his disappointment to Bloom for making him faint and releasing Rosaline. Bloom tried to explain that there might be a possibility that Rosaline wasn't entirely guilty. In the dormitory room, Sam was in increasing pain because he hadn't received any treatment. Bloom and Skye finally broke down the door, allowing Musa and the others to quickly take Sam to the greenhouse for treatment by Ben. A while later, Dowling gathered all the students in the auditorium and warned them to prepare because the Bird Ones might launch an attack before the Solarian Kingdom's forces arrived. Skye later found Stella, who had escaped from the kingdom. He offered to help her hide at Alfia. But Stella declined and made it clear that their romantic relationship was over. Turning to Bloom, she urgently approached Dowling to share the shocking news that Rosaline had killed all the residents of Aster Dell because they were all blood witches. Dowling, taken aback by this revelation, tried to stay composed and advised Bloom to stay away from Rosaline. But Bloom's anger flared up as she questioned why Rosaline had put her in danger, especially with the burned ones infiltrating the school. She tried to understand why Rosaline might have been forced into such actions, considering her weakened state. Dowling, upon hearing this, finally realized that Rosaline was amassing power at the Stone Circle, and the school's power outage was due to her weakening the magical barrier. The Stone Circle served as both a source of magic for the school and a protective barrier. Dowling warned Bloom to be cautious, as she was the primary target of the Burned Ones. Meanwhile, at the Stone Circle, Rosaline channeled her magic to breach the magical barrier, allowing the Burned Ones to enter Alfia. In the greenhouse, Musa couldn't bear to see Sam increasing pain, especially knowing that he wouldn't recover unless the burned one that had attacked him was defeated. Meanwhile, Bloom was seen talking to Sky to apologize for her selfish behavior. Shortly after they reconciled, the burned ones attempted to break down the school building's door. All the specialists rallied to hold them back using benches and heavy objects. Bloom then met with Stella and Aisha, inviting them to lead the school through a secret path in the cafeteria. Meanwhile, Silva, who had met with Skye, decided to reveal the truth about what had happened during the mission in Asterdell. He feared he might not survive the Burned One's attack that night. Silva explained that he had initially tried to prevent Andreas from taking part in the destruction of Asterdell, but Andreas insisted on going, leading to a fight between them. In the end, Silva couldn't control his anger and stabbed Andreas with his sword. Silva then approached Rosaline and was shocked to learn that she had destroyed Asterdell without realizing that its inhabitants were blood witches. In the present, Skye was deeply disappointed with Silva for killing his father upon hearing this confession. Turning to Musa, she appeared growing more upset by Sam's condition, confided in Tara that she didn't want to lose him like she had lost her mother. Tara hugged Musa and assured her that she would help. Shortly after, Tara headed to the auditorium to clear away objects blocking the door. Her actions surprised everyone, but she explained that they needed to act fast to defeat the burned one that had attacked Sam and save him. Unexpectedly, the burned one had already entered the room from above and jumped down, startling the students. Strangely, the creature didn't attack but left the school building, as if it was following something. Outside the school, Bloom then prepared to harness her magical powers, while Aisha drew water from the pool and spread it on the ground, creating a protective circle around Bloom. Bloom then unleashed her fiery magic, which transformed into wings on her back. Surrounded by the burned ones, Bloom attacked them with her powerful fire magic. 
After defeating all the creatures, Bloom was surprised to see the burned ones transform into ordinary humans. Dowlin arrived and praised Bloom for her victory. Finally, Bloom returned to the dormitory with Aisha and Stella. As Dowling looked at the bodies before her, Silva approached her and informed her that he hadn't found Rosaline yet. Dowling then revealed that the residents of Aster Dell were blood witches, which had driven Rosaline to kill them all. However, Dowling still wondered why Rosaline had kept this information hidden. At the school, Sam had made a full recovery and Beatrix had regained consciousness. Beatrix introduced Rosaline to Dane and Riven. Meanwhile, Bloom was resting in her room with her four friends. Sky sat alone in the courtyard until early morning and Bloom approached him to check on his condition. When she noticed Dowling heading towards the courtyard, Bloom said goodbye to Skye and hurried to meet the headmistress of Alfia. In the headmistress's office, Bloom expressed her gratitude to Dowling for protecting her and even gave her a hug. Dowling suggested that Bloom should return to the First World for a while since she had been away from her parents for a long time. When Bloom returned, Vanessa and Michael were surprised by their daughter's arrival, especially since she came with Aisha and the others, which they didn't expect because they thought she had trouble socializing. On another occasion, Bloom finally revealed her true identity as a fairy with magical powers to her parents. Although they were initially shocked, Vanessa and Michael accepted Bloom as their beloved daughter. Back at Alfia, Skye and Silva also reconciled after Skye came to terms with his father's past. While they were talking, they were both taken aback when the Solarian Kingdom's forces suddenly arrived and surrounded them. Luna then declared that Silva should be arrested for the attempted murder of Andreas, who, to their surprise, stepped out of a car in good health. Sky and Silva were shocked to see Andreas, who had been hiding in the kingdom all this time. Meanwhile, Dowling, who had just laid the burned ones to rest, was approached by Rosaline. Rosaline admitted that she had deliberately opened the magical barrier to allow the burned ones into Alfia as a test of Bloom's powers. She also revealed that Andreas was still alive and had been hiding to raise Beatrix. During their conversation, Rosaline suggested to Dowling that she should step down from her position as headmistress, but Dowling refused and walked away, leaving Rosaline furious. In her anger, Rosaline used her magic to fatally injure Dowling, and then she disappeared. In the series' conclusion, Bloom and her friends returned to Alfia, but they were taken aback by the reception from Rosaline, Luna, and Andreas, who had assumed control of the school. The girls were left wondering about the true events that had transpired at the school during their absence. The series kicks off by introducing us to Alfia, a magical school in the fairy world called Otherworld. The rules at Alfia get stricter after the headmistress, Farah Dowling, goes missing. Meanwhile, there are changes in the training system for specialists, humans who go on missions with fairies because Saul Silva, the former instructor of the specialists, is arrested on charges of trying to harm another specialist named Andreas. Under the guidance of Rosaline, the new headmistress, all students are required to train rigorously to improve their abilities. This results in many students either choosing to leave or getting expelled from the school each week for not meeting the school's standards. On the other hand, the Solaria Kingdom's forces are actively searching for Dowling, but she remains elusive despite months of efforts. What no one knows is that Rosaline secretly killed Dowling. One night, outside the Alfie dormitories, some students were camping in the woods. During this time, fairy named Devon and Ivy, a specialist, engaged in inappropriate behavior that upset their friends. They discreetly moved to a more secluded spot to be intimate until Devon sensed that something was watching them. Ivy suspected it might be her friend Nick. As they prepared to leave, Ivy glanced toward a tree and pulled out two knives she had with her. Strangely, her body suddenly stiffened, causing Devon to approach her. Ivy moved uncontrollably and ended up accidentally hurting herself by plunging one of her own knives into her neck. Meanwhile, Devon ran away but was attacked by a mysterious creature resembling a large leech known as Scrapers. Switching to Bloom, a fire fairy who is Rosaline's favorite student at Alfia. She was summoned to the headmistress office because her grades had dropped. Rosaline understood that this was due to the changes in the school's rules and asked Bloom to forget the old ways Dowling used and focus on adapting to the new rules. Rosaline explained that she had intentionally made Alfie's rules stricter to prepare all students for the various dangers in Otherworld, which was inhabited by dangerous creatures unlike the first world where humans lived. At that moment, Bloom didn't fully agree with Rosaline and found her increasingly strict since becoming the headmistress of Alfia. Therefore, she planned to find Dowling soon to make Alfie a more comfortable place for all students to learn. On the other hand, Bloom's dorm mate Aisha, a water fairy, was seen warming up by the lake before going for a swim. She got surprised when a specialist named Grey Owens emerged from the water. After he climbed ashore, they introduced themselves and Aisha secretly hoped not to run into him again because she found him annoying. Back at school, the news of Davin and Ivy's disappearance in the woods had spread and become a hot topic among many students. 
Meanwhile, Skye, who was training with other specialists, was paired with Dane for a battle. Unfortunately, Dane managed to injure Skye's waist, which made him act arrogantly and brag about his specialist skills in front of his friends. Skye was then promptly taken to the greenhouse for treatment by Terra, an Earth fairy who was also Bloom's dorm mate. On another occasion, Bloom received news that Silva was going to be taken to Polaris for punishment. Along with her dorm mates including Stella, the Light Fairy and Princess of the Solaria Kingdom and Musa, the Mind Fairy, Bloom hatched a plan to free him. Skye, who also heard about Silva's impending punishment from his father, Andreas, was disappointed by what he saw as an overly harsh punishment for a man he considered like a father. However, Andreas forbade Skye from participating in the mission to transfer Silva to Polaris. Beatrix, Andrea's adopted child, who was present, complained to her father about how Rosaline treated her like a servant. Andreas tried to console his adopted daughter, explaining that Rosaline treated her that way because she was needed for something important at Alfie. Meanwhile, Stella secretly eavesdropped on Andreas and his children's conversation using her invisibility magic despite being forbidden to use it after her escape from the kingdom some time ago. Unfortunately, Beatrix discovered Stella's presence and Stella lied, claiming she was following Sky her former boyfriend. Beatrix then approached Rosaline and informed her about the disappearance of Davin and Ivy, who had not been found yet. However, Rosaline didn't seem to pay much attention to the news, which made Beatrix suspicious. Many students had suddenly gone missing or been expelled from the school since Rosaline's arrival. Additionally, Beatrix found it strange that Rosaline spent a lot of time in the East Wing reading ancient books and she hoped to be involved in something important for the school. At the same time, Skye was thinking about Silva, who was serving his punishment for the alleged murder of his biological father. However, Skye felt lost after Silva's departure. Although Andreas had returned, he seemed more concerned about Beatrix. Skye attempted to get closer to his father by returning the sword he had received from Silva, but Andreas refused it, claiming it wasn't his and boasting about himself, which made Skye uncomfortable. Later in the evening, Silva was seen getting into a car headed for Polaris. A team of specialists, including Dane and Riven, Beatrix's boyfriend, was part of the security detail led by Andreas. Meanwhile, Bloom and her friends had quietly prepared and were waiting for Stella before they executed their plan to free Silva. Unfortunately, Stella, who was about to leave, was intercepted by Rosaline. She was then taken to the headmistress's office for breaking school rules by using her invisibility magic. As a punishment, Rosaline attached a magic prevention device to Stella's back, causing her pain. School graphs. Inside the security car with Silva, Riven expressed doubts to Dane about whether Silva was truly a murderer. However, Dane was happy to see Silva leaving the school, guilty or not, because he enjoyed the new school system implemented by Rosaline, which shielded him from the ridicule of other students. Meanwhile, Bloom and the others decided to proceed without Stella. They came behind bushes to monitor the car carrying Silva. As the car passed their hiding spot, Aisha used her magic to wet the car's engine, causing it to stall. This would lead to Silva being transferred to another vehicle with less security. While the driver checked the stalled engine, Tara discreetly took the handcuff keys from the driver's pocket using plant vines. Aisha then sent the keys to Silva in a water bubble. Although Riven briefly noticed the water bubble, he didn't suspect Aisha of trying to free Silva. After successfully providing the keys, she used her magic to release the fuel so that Bloom could set the car on fire. Andreas, who was in the leading car, was shocked when he heard the explosion of his team's vehicle. Meanwhile, Silva took the opportunity to unlock his handcuffs and ran into the forest, Raven and the others chased him until he shot two arrows into Silva's back, forcing him to jump into the river. Andreas ordered his men to check downstream and retrieve Silva's body. During this time, Silva managed to survive in the water thanks to Aisha creating an air bubble for him to breathe. Turning to the greenhouse, Sam, Tara's older brother, expressed his frustration to his father, Ben Harvey. They were constantly ordered by Rosaline to make herbal remedies, and Sam felt the pressure of always obeying her orders. Now back to Silva, who had been rescued by Bloom and the others. He asked the girls to take him to Black Bridge in the First World, where he could hide in the home of his friend named Sebastian. Still, the believed Sebastian had the power to defeat Rosaline. Upon arriving at Sebastian's residence, Silva talked about Skye and expressed hope that Skye would forgive him for the past accident when he attacked Andreas. Bloom, who was also present, asked about Dowling's whereabouts, but Silva had no information. They then discussed a plan to expose Rosaline. At Alfia, Dane appeared very enthusiastic as he described Silva's condition after being wounded by an arrow in his back before jumping into the river. 
He used this to ridicule Skye, which angered him and led to a physical altercation between Skye and Dane. Fortunately, Riven intervened and separated the two specialist friends. Later that night, Aisha and the others met with Stella and questioned why the Solaria Kingdom princess hadn't joined them in the mission to free Silva. Musa, sensing her friend's anger, asked them to calm down and listen to Stella's explanation. Stella then explained that she couldn't meet with them because she had been intercepted and punished by Rosaline for using her invisibility magic. However, Stella didn't go into detail about the nature of her punishment due to her embarrassment. Meanwhile, Bloom was seen meeting with Rosaline and complaining about her decreasing powers. Rosaline requested that Bloom study privately with her, and Bloom agreed, hoping to gather more information about Rosaline and unveil the headmistress's true intentions. At the same time, Stella, feeling sad after her punishment, attempted to find Skye to confide in him. However, she couldn't locate him and ended up meeting Beatrix, who invited her to have a drink together and help her relax. Stella began sharing about the punishment from Rosaline, who she couldn't disclose to her doormates because she felt ashamed. While they were still talking, Davin, who was injured, suddenly stumbled into the room. Before losing consciousness, he uttered Rosaline's name. At that very moment, Rosaline, who had just arrived at the East Wing, was shocked to learn that one of the students she had captured had disappeared. One day, Tara ventured into the forest to search for plant roots needed for Gavin's treatment, as he was now being cared for in the greenhouse. While hunting for the plants, she talked with Sam, who continued to complain about Rosaline's high-handed behavior towards their family. Their father, however, remained silent and complied with all of the headmistress's requests. As they chatted, Tara began to feel as if she were being watched, suspecting it might be the same creature that had attacked Davin. Just before using her magic to defend herself, Flora, Tara's distant cousin, emerged from behind a tree, bringing joy to Tara, who immediately embraced her cousin. Back at the dorm, Tara introduced Flora as a nature fairy to her roommate. Everyone seemed to welcome Flora's presence except for Stella, who wasn't pleased with the arrival of a new person in her room, especially since she was a princess. In the headmistress's office, Andres reported his failure in capturing Silva, which disappointed Rosaline. She punished him using her freezing magic. Beatrix, unable to bear seeing her father punished, then entered the room and pretended to have an important matter, asking Rosaline to sign a crucial document. Rosaline released her magic, allowing Andreas to leave the room. Beatrix expressed her suspicions that Silva could escape with the help of someone else, but she had no concrete evidence. Hearing this, Rosaline explained that Beatrix's suspicions were useless without supporting evidence. Shortly after, Bloom entered the room for a private lesson with Rosaline, who warmly welcomed her. Beatrix, witnessing this, felt irritated by the headmistress's cold treatment toward her. In the greenhouse, Tara was busy treating a specialist named Kat who had injured her hand. While tending to her, Kat noticed the growing friendship between Flora and Riven, and advised Tara to keep Flora away from Riven, who had a reputation as a troublemaker at school. After receiving this advice, Tara approached Flora and asked Riven to leave while giving him the item he had been looking for earlier. She also warned her cousin, who seemed interested in Riven, to stay away from him because he wasn't a good guy. Back in the headmistress's office, Bloom began reading a book on magic control. During a brief moment when Rosaline left the room, Bloom took the opportunity to search through Rosaline's desk drawers. She discovered an old book with illustrations of strange creatures. Quickly, Bloom took photographs of some of the images in the book. Unexpectedly, Rosaline returned and realized that Bloom was attempting to spy on her. After their private study session ended, Bloom invited Aisha and Stella to meet and discuss her discovery of the strange creatures in Rosaline's room. She then sent all the images to Sebastian, who was with Silva. Sebastian struggled to decipher the ancient text, especially with many complex symbols that were not easy to understand, so he needed a translation dictionary. Silva suggested that Bloom go with Skye to retrieve the dictionary from his house. After ending the communication with Bloom, Silva quickly drew a map of his house so that Bloom could easily find the translation book. Suddenly, Sebastian pulled Silva into the portal behind the closet door just as Andreas arrived. Andreas questioned Sebastian about Silva and Sebastian, wanting to protect his friend, tried to deny any involvement. However, Andreas didn't believe him and attacked him, opening the closet door revealing that it was empty. Not finding anything, Andreas was about to leave but noticed the map of Silva's house lying on Sebastian's desk. At Alfia, Bloom persuaded Skye to accompany her to his house, assuring him that it was all for Silva's sake. Skye agreed, and they arrived near Skye's former residence a while later. Bloom was amazed by the natural beauty of the place and suggested they go for a horse ride, which made them both happy as they spent time together. Upon entering the house, Skye reminisced about various childhood memories and Bloom, who quickly retrieved the ancient language translation dictionary, also glimpsed some childhood photos of Skye. 
Shortly after, Sky's father arrived and began sharing stories from Sky's childhood through several of his cherished belongings. Turning to Sam, who still held onto his anger towards Rosaline, Muzav accompanied him and encouraged him to express his frustrations. However, he claimed to be fine, which prompted Musa to secretly absorb his emotions, helping him to calm down. At Sky's house, he and Blue heard the sound of a car in the yard, and to their surprise, Andreas and his team arrived. Sky quickly led Bloom to hide in the basement of his bedroom. Meanwhile, Andreas and his team entered the house but didn't find anyone, so he left and ordered Dane and Riven to set the house on fire. Sky was shocked to see his home starting to burn, and he urged Bloom to hurry upstairs and out of the house. However, she refused because Andreas and the others were waiting outside. Instead, she used her fire magic to protect herself and Sky from the flames. In the greenhouse laboratory, Sam and Musa found Tara researching a plant that could heal Davin. Unfortunately, the treatment would be too strong for him, making it dangerous for his body. Despite Tara's warnings, Flora disregarded them and injected the potion into Davin, causing him to react violently. Flora then showed him a picture of a scraper and asked if it was the creature that had attacked him. He eventually confirmed that it was even though his body continued to react, leading Tara to try to restrain him with her magical plant vines. Unfortunately, he broke free, attacked Flora, and demanded his magic back before running out of the room. At the same time, Beatrix and Stella found themselves in Rosaline's room, enjoying a drink and chatting freely since Rosaline was always occupied in the east wing of the school. Their relaxation was suddenly interrupted when Davin burst into the room, followed by Tara, who had come to administer a calming potion. Rosaline appeared shortly after and Davin reached for a weapon to attack his schoolmates. Tara tried to approach him quietly with a calming potion, but Rosaline intervened, sensing that Davin was under some influence. Rosaline used her magic and Davin fell unconscious. Tara checked his heartbeat, only to discover that he had died. Rosaline asked if anyone had injected something into Davin, and Flora, on the verge of confessing, was cut off by Tara, who took the blame. Rosaline then ordered them all to leave her room. On another occasion, Ben shared his successful efforts to persuade Rosaline not to expel Tara, although he believed that leaving Alfie might be a good thing for her, freeing her from Rosaline's influence. Sam, witnessing his father's despair, felt saddened. In another room, Bloom and the others conducted a video call with Sebastian to analyze the images from Rosaline's ancient book, using the translation dictionary. Aisha managed to decipher one symbol, meaning to store, while Bloom interpreted another symbol as magic. When combined, they indicated storing magic. Tara recalled Davin's request to have his magic returned, leading Bloom to assume that the scraper creature was used to steal fairy's magic to make the thief stronger and Davin was allowed to die to protect this secret. However, Stella had doubts about this assumption as Rosaline had already become the most powerful fairy in Otherworld, and there was no apparent reason for her to desire the magic of other fairies. Sebastian pointed out that sometimes, even when someone becomes powerful, they still desire more power. On the other side, Rosaline gathered Andreas and his team to inquire about the latest news regarding the missing Silva. As he had failed in his mission, she punished them with her freezing magic. Beatrix tried to help her father by suggesting that Riven knew something about Silva. Rosaline then ordered Andreas and Dane to leave, while Riven remained in the room with Beatrix. Meanwhile, Skye, having just taken a shower, was surprised by Silva's presence in Alfia. Silva apologized, but Skye remained indifferent, returning the sword that Silva had previously identified as Andreas's. Silva revealed that he had sneaked into Alfia with Ben's help. He was willing to face banishment just to see Skye, but Skye's anger prevailed. He expelled Silva from both Alfia and Black Bridge, forbidding him from ever returning. Simultaneously, Rosaline and Andres learned of Silva's infiltration into the school after Ben was forced to reveal it. Consequently, Silva was apprehended and taken to the East Wing. Several days later, Bloom and Aisha were given a task by Rosaline to go shopping in the First World because Alfie would host a banquet for alumni. The three of them volunteered to participate in the preparations for the party to have a chance to visit the First World and meet Sebastian. Upon reaching Sebastian's residence, Bloom informed him that all the missing fairies were in the East Wing, heavily guarded by Rosaline. Sebastian suggested that they sneak into the East Wing during the banquet since the guards and Rosaline would be occupied, especially since Queen Luna would introduce Rosaline as the headmistress of Alfie and the strongest fairy in the other world. Bloom thought the banquet would be the perfect opportunity to expose Rosaline's wrongdoing, especially with various important guests in attendance. Back at Alfia, Bloom and Stella were strategizing on how to execute their plan to investigate the East Wing during the banquet. Stella learned that only VIP guests would be allowed in the main banquet, including herself as a royal member. She also mentioned that her mother couldn't attend and would be represented by her uncle, 
who disliked Rosaline, making Stella think she could persuade him to help remove the magical restraints that Rosaline had imposed. In the East Wing, Rosaline was conducting an experiment with a rat, injecting a potion into it for research purposes. When she placed the rat inside a box, another creature inside immediately attacked it. Shortly afterward, Andres entered and informed her that the invited guests had arrived at Alfia. In the dorm room, Stella and the others were busy getting ready for the banquet. Bloom suggested going to the East Wing, thinking that if Rosaline found out, she might pardon her since she was one of Rosaline's favorite students. Aisha and the others disagreed as Bloom's absence at the party would raise suspicion. Meanwhile, Beatrix knocked on the door, pretending to want to share her sadness after breaking up with Riven. Unfortunately, Stella said she was busy, leaving Beatrix disappointed. A little later, Bloom and the others were at the banquet, and as they were about to strategize, Rosaline invited Bloom to join her. Stella went to meet her uncle Josh, who had arrived. At the same time, Tara received a message from Musa informing her that Sam was angry and had left Alfia. Back to Bloom, after hearing Rosaline's invitation to the VIP banquet, she initially claimed she wasn't worthy to participate. However, Rosaline assured her that Bloom was the first fairy to bring about many changes at Alfia, making her an essential figure at the banquet. Bloom seemed reluctant, but Rosaline revealed that she knew about Bloom and her friends helping Silva escape a while ago. If this information were to reach the Royal Solarian Army Commander, the Kingdom could capture Bloom and the others. Surprised and puzzled by how Rosaline found out about this, Bloom had no choice but to comply with Rosaline's request to attend the banquet with the VIP guests. Meanwhile, Sebastian, who had joined the banquet, approached Aisha and Flora to talk. Upon learning that Bloom couldn't enter the East Wing, he suggested that the two of them replace her. Stella, on the other hand, was still busy trying to persuade Josh to talk to Luna and remove the magical restraints on her back. Returning to Bloom, who had entered the banquet room, she was surprised to find Skye there, who had also been invited by Rosaline. Shortly after, Stella arrived with Josh, questioning why Bloom was in the room. During their conversation, Josh seemed impressed by Bloom's knowledge as a fairy. In the East Wing, Aisha and Flora quietly began to execute their plan. Meanwhile, Sebastian observed what was happening in the banquet hall from another table. Bloom then advised Rosaline to be more composed when dealing with Josh. Rosaline mentioned that Josh could be quite irritating to her, but she didn't want to have problems with the royal members. She also discussed the suspicions that Bloom and the others had about her being behind various issues at Alfia, emphasizing that she did it all to protect her students. Before leaving, she reminded Bloom that powerful fairies often face distrust, Bloom felt confused by everything Rosaline had discussed and began to waver in her suspicions toward the headmistress. Inside the East Wing, while Aisha was inspecting the room, she was suddenly attacked by a scraper. Fortunately, Flora managed to save her by burying a creature. After meeting Bloom and Stella, they showed some photos of the scrapers that Flora had burned earlier, along with some notes found in the East Wing. Bloom then stated that they still lacked evidence to accuse Rosaline of planning something sinister, especially now that Rosaline knew about their actions in rescuing Silva and could easily expose them to the kingdom. She also began to doubt whether Rosaline was as evil as they had believed all along. Stella smiled upon hearing this and told Bloom that she was starting to trust Rosaline only because the headmistress had always favored her. Before leaving, Stella affirmed her commitment to expose all the wrongdoings Rosaline had done at Alfia. With confidence, Stella addressed all the guests in the banquet hall, raising concerns about the unusual activities Rosaline had undertaken as the headmistress of Alfia, including the imprisonment of fairies. The room fell silent as they listened to Stella's words. Rosaline arrived with Davin, who was still alive, and began to explain her own investigation into the rumors surrounding the disappearance of two Alfia students. She revealed that she had borrowed royal archive books from Arthur and had stumbled upon information about ancient creatures known as scrapers. These creatures, she explained, were used by blood witches to absorb fairy magic making the witches more powerful. With the appearance of these scrapers near Alfie, Rosaline suspected the presence of a blood witch among them. After hearing Rosaline's explanation, Stella left the banquet hall, feeling embarrassed for accusing Rosaline without substantial evidence. Skye followed her to offer comfort. Meanwhile, Rosaline introduced Bloom to everyone as a fairy possessing the legendary dragonfire magic, the protector of Otherworld, leaving the guests astonished. Once the party came to an end, Bloom approached Rosaline and inquired about her suspicion that blood witches had kidnapped her parents more than a decade ago to steal her dragonfire magic. Rosaline admitted that she wasn't entirely certain but promised to help Bloom find her parents. As a sign of her sincerity, Rosaline also pardoned Silva from his punishment, as the blood witches also his enemies. On the other hand, Beatrix found herself alone outside the gates of Alfia, feeling misunderstood by everyone, including Andreas and Dane. Suddenly, she sensed a lurking presence and was attacked by a group of scrapers. 
The following day, Beatrix was reported missing, and during a meeting with Rosaline, Andreas suspected that blood witches were behind Beatrix's disappearance. Andreas proposed a fairy exchange to save Beatrix, whom he believed to be his biological daughter. Rosaline disagreed with this idea, as fairy exchanges were typically what the evil witches wanted when kidnapping fairies. Despite Rosaline's objections, Andreas decided to go through with his plan. Without Rosaline's consent, he met with Marco, and killed him, intending to use Marco's comrade as a hostage in exchange for Beatrix's release. Back at school, Bloom found herself at the center of attention among the students after news spread about her dragonfire power. In response, she and Aisha began researching the history of blood witches on Earth. From historical records, they discovered that dragonfire magic had last appeared during a war a thousand years ago. During a conversation with Aisha, Bloom admitted that she didn't entirely trust Rosaline. However, because she believed Rosaline could help her uncover the truth about her identity, Bloom eventually agreed to collaborate with the headmistress. She met with Rosaline and expressed her desire to hunt down blood witches to learn more about her birth parents. Rosaline advised Bloom not to rush, considering the importance of protecting a fairy with legendary dragonfire power. Rosaline also mentioned Beatrix's abduction during the previous banquet and suspected that one of the guests might be a blood witch. However, she asked Blue to keep this information confidential, as it could be a trap set by the blood witches to capture her. In the forest, Andreas was seen dragging Marco's lifeless body and communicating with a blood witch to arrange a hostage exchange. The blood witches approved the proposal, and when the witch arrived, Andreas attacked him. Unfortunately, another blood witch discovered Andreas' actions and froze him in place. Meanwhile, Sebastian headed to a pub to meet Bloom. He shared with her that during the previous banquet, Andreas had insulted him, calling him a foolish specialist. Sebastian had never liked Andreas, who had a reputation as a bully at Alfia. Before leaving, Sebastian gave Bloom a file containing the results of their investigation into various incidents at Alfia. In her dormitory room, Stella, who hadn't attended the school party, received a distress message from Beatrix, asking for help. From the pictures Beatrix sent, it appeared she was in an abandoned old building. Stella grew extremely worried and immediately called Bloom, who was at the party with the others. Bloom asked Stella not to act hastily, suspecting it might be a trap to lure the fairies. To convince Stella, Bloom finally disclosed the secret that Beatrix had been kidnapped by blood witches and might be unconscious. The message was likely a ploy to draw the fairies to the location. A while later, Skye and Riven, having learned about Beatrix's kidnapping, prepared to rescue her. Bloom, seeing this, tried to dissuade them, but Skye reassured her that everything would be okay. Musa also decided to join Skye and Riven. Although worried, Bloom reluctantly allowed them to head to Beatrix's location. In the midst of this, Stella grew frustrated with Bloom and asked her dorm mate to let others handle the rescue. Bloom, not willing to accept this, criticized Stella for enjoying giving orders just because she was a princess. Stella, growing even angrier, revealed that she had never wanted to be at Alfia in the first place but was trapped there due to a magical restraint device on her back. After showing them the device embedded in her back, Bloom and the others were surprised because Stella had never shared this information with them before. Meanwhile, Sky, Riven, and Musa had ventured into an abandoned cabin to rescue the unconscious Beatrix. However, they heard the eerie sounds of scrapers and suddenly, Andres appeared before them. Sky was puzzled by his father's presence, but Musa quickly realized that someone was controlling Andres' mind. Riven urged Sky and Musa to leave while he confronted Andreas. Musa tried to find a hiding spot but was attacked by a scraper that drained her fairy magic. She managed to break free and hid in a room, although she had lost some of her powers. Musa contacted Bloom with phone to relay everything that transpired in the cabin, including Andrea's being under someone else's control. Flora advised Musa to stay hidden until her magic powers recovered. Bloom inquired about Andrea's and Musa sensed anger and resentment towards Skye's father, suggesting that the one controlling Andrea's knew him well. Outside, Andreas continued to battle Silva and other specialists who had come to rescue Beatrix. After Skye suggested that Riven take Beatrix outside, Riven carried her to Dane, who was guarding the building's exterior. Riven intended to return to find Musa, whose magic was fading. In the dormitory, Bloom reviewed files from Sebastian to uncover the identity of the Blood Witch. After discussing with her friends, she realized the Blood Witch's identity, deducing their strong grudge against Andreas. She rushed to confront someone she knew, preparing her fire magic. Inside her room, she found a man conducting a mysterious ritual. Bloom summoned Sebastian, expecting her suspicions to be true. Calmly, Sebastian admitted to being a blood witch who had absorbed various fairy magic powers, including Davin's. He expressed a desire to take Bloom's power, and offered a partnership to betray the fairies. Before Bloom could respond, Aisha arrived and chased Sebastian into a portal in his room. 
Bloom returned to Alfia and informed Rosaline that Sebastian was the evil witch they had sought. Stella and the others arrived, relieved to see Bloom safe. Stai appeared visibly distraught, and Bloom hugged him as he explained that he had been forced to stab Andreas when his father attempted to kill Silva. Aisha arrived late, having lost Sebastian, but her friends reassured her, acknowledging her efforts. Worried about Musa, they were surprised when Riven arrived carrying Musa, who was injured and covered in blood. On another occasion, Bloom attempted to contact Sebastian and invited him to meet outside the school. Unfortunately, Sebastian declined the invitation as he had become aware of her plan to capture him. After the failed attempt, Rosaline and Bavani, the commander of the Solarian Kingdom's forces, along with hidden soldiers, revealed themselves. They discussed the presence of a blood witch spy who had discovered their plan. Rosaline stressed the urgency of capturing Sebastian before he could absorb more fairy powers and become stronger. Back at Alfia, Bloom, Aisha, and Stella were walking in the dormitory corridor, discussing the unsuccessful capture plan. Their conversation was interrupted when they saw Musa mopping the floor and receiving a reprimand from Rosaline for not carrying out her punishment properly. Musa had left Alfia without permission to rescue Beatrix, and due to the scraper attack, she had lost her magic, which should have resulted in expulsion. However, Rosaline chose not to expel her because she was Bloom's friend. Stella then asked Bloom and Aisha to retrieve a package from the kingdom. Beatrix was also inspecting her package and asked Stella about it, to which Stella replied that she would explain later. In their dorm room, Aisha showed them a convergence crystal borrowed from the Queen, thanks to Stella's negotiation skills. Aisha and Stella plan to use the crystal, a fairy magic battery, to combine their magic and restore Musa's powers. Bloom and the others, including Musa holding the convergence crystal, prepared in their positions. They began channeling their magic into the crystal. However, Musa unexpectedly stopped the process and left the room, leaving her friends puzzled. Aisha was frustrated with herself for the failed plan, but Bloom reassured her. She decided to meet with Sebastian and ask him to return Musa's magic, even though it was risky. To carry out her plan, Bloom needed a royal ancient book to exchange for Musa's magic. Stella assisted her by taking the book from Beatrix. In the stone circle, Rosaline and Silva planned to expose the blood witch spy at Alfia. They decided to strengthen the magic veil with a double shield to identify the infiltrator. Silva found this precaution excessive, but Rosaline ignored his concerns and began reinforcing the shield. Meanwhile, Bloom, armed with the royal ancient book, said goodbye to Skye and headed to the First World to meet Sebastian. Despite Skye's worries for her safety, Bloom assured him she would be fine and stepped out of the magic veil, which now had Rosaline's enhanced protection. In the First World, Bloom was surprised when Sebastian suggested meeting at a cafe instead of a more secluded place. When she arrived at the cafe, Sebastian praised her courage for meeting him alone. Without wasting time, Bloom asked Sebastian to return Musa's magic in exchange for the ancient royal book she had brought. Sebastian, uninterested in the old book, revealed its connection to his father and presented two options for returning Musa's magic, which using a scraper to extract and return the absorbed magic or killing him. Realizing the difficulty of both options, Bloom chose to leave Sebastian and promptly contacted Aisha to share her meeting with Sebastian. Aisha and the other fairies grew concerned about Bloom's safety and went to Rosaline to inquire about her whereabouts. Rosaline assured them she would continue monitoring her connection with Bloom and expressed indifference if Bloom lost control of her powers, which could potentially harm Sebastian. Rosaline was also annoyed because Beatrix had secretly taken the ancient royal book on Stella's request. Returning to Bloom, she initially led Sebastian to a more secluded place with the intention of killing him. Sebastian, however, was aware of her plan and attempted to sway her intentions. He offered to reveal Bloom's origins and return the powers he had absorbed from her friends. The condition was that she must surrender her dragon fire magic, which she sought to use to restore Asterdel City and initiate a war against the fairies. Sebastian then disclosed the story of Bloom's kidnapping by his father many years ago, but refused to continue unless she gave him her power. Aware of Sebastian's sinister intentions for war, Bloom firmly refused to relinquish her magic, leaving Sebastian disappointed as she prepared to leave empty-handed. He intentionally mentioned Rosaline, revealing her involvement in Dowling's death at the cemetery. Later that night, Bloom's friends and Skye awaited her at the Magic Veil boundary, which they couldn't pass due to Rosaline's shield. Unexpectedly, Bloom found herself at the cemetery, face to face with Rosaline. She expressed her disappointment with Rosaline for killing Dowling. In response, Rosaline attempted to incapacitate Bloom using her ice magic. This angered Bloom, causing her to lose control of her emotions and unleash her powerful dragon fire magic, ultimately burning Rosaline to death. Sometime later, Bloom returned to Alfia, and as a consequence of her actions leading to Rosaline's death, 
Silva was compelled to place a magic inhibitor on her hand. Silva then urged Bloom and her friends to keep Rosaline's death a secret, attributing it to Bloom's dragon fire. Shortly after, Silva connected them to Luna through a hologram. Luna announced that Rosaline's death was caused by a blood witch, even though she knew it was actually Bloom who had killed the headmistress. Bloom was shocked by Luna's statement, which had the potential to trigger a war between the fairies and blood witches. The next morning, Stella woke up Bloom, who was still restless. She reassured Bloom that Sebastian had used her to kill Rosaline intentionally, so it wasn't entirely her fault. Aisha also joined them and mentioned that Tara and Flora were planning to search for evidence of Dowling's body, which could prove Rosaline's guilt. Meanwhile, Stella and Aisha were determined to help Bloom get a lighter sentence in her trial with Luna the following day. The day of the trial arrived, and Luna, who had come to Alfia, wasted no time in starting the murder case trial involving Bloom. At the same time, Tara and Flora were at the cemetery searching for Dowling's body as potential evidence. Flora used a chemical to extract decomposing bodies from the ground, but they found nothing. Instead, Tara noticed a withered plant and picked it up. Back at Alfia, Luna asked for physical evidence after Bloom accused Rosaline of killing Dowling. Unfortunately, Bloom couldn't provide any evidence because Tara and Flora hadn't found Dowling's body yet. Stella couldn't present a strong defense either. As Bloom was losing hope, Aisha arrived and tried to convince the Queen that Bloom was a good fairy. She explained that Bloom had grown up in the First World and had been raised by ordinary humans, which made it challenging for her to control her magic. However, Luna shocked everyone by revealing that Aisha had been dating Grey, who was actually a blood witch. Aisha was stunned by this revelation as she had believed Grey was a regular human. After Aisha left, Stella continued to plead with the Queen to spare Bloom, but Luna showed Stella the letter she had written when requesting the Convergence Crystal. In the letter, Stella had referred to Bloom as a time bomb. Stella looked nervous, realizing Luna had used the letter to justify the punishment. Bloom finally accepted her fate and confessed to everything, leading Luna to sentence her to 20 years of stasis. Stella continued to plead, but Bloom gracefully accepted her punishment and was taken to the confinement area. Shortly afterward, Luna removed the magic inhibitor from Stella's back and acknowledged that her daughter deserved to be the crown princess of the realm. Stella, however, refused the title and left the courtroom immediately. She rushed back to the dormitory to inform her friends of Bloom's trial outcome, and they all felt deeply saddened by the news that Bloom would be imprisoned for decades. Meanwhile, after Grey had been expelled from Alfia and ended his relationship with Aisha, he met Sebastian who urged him to stay focused on their mission to rebuild Astrodel. Grey was still unsure about his feelings for Aisha, so Sebastian reminded him of the fairy's blame on blood witches for Rosaline's death, caused by Bloom's actions. As for Skye, he was secretly planning to visit Bloom in her confinement cell, while preparing with other specialists for an attack on Sebastian's house. However, his actions were discovered by the guards, leading to his capture and confinement in the dormitory. Inside the dormitory, Stella and the others were thinking of ways to free Bloom, but they couldn't find a solution. This prompted Flora to return to her study table and document the results of her plant research. While doing so, she noticed that all her plants except the one Terra had found that a cemetery were withering. Sensing something unusual, she borrowed the Convergence Crystal from Aisha to infuse magical energy into the plant. Meanwhile, while in prison, Bloom reminisced about her childhood and unintentionally shed tears. To her surprise, someone's hand reached through the magic barrier to wipe away her tears. Simultaneously, her confinement cell slowly disappeared, and Bloom realized that Dowling had returned. A little later in the school storage room, Bloom met Aisha and her friends, where Flora explained how she had revived Dowling from a plant Terra had found at a cemetery. Dowling shared that she had connected her spirit with nature because she hadn't had the chance to say goodbye to those she knew. She also apologized for not being able to assist in the war against the Blood Witches, as she would soon fade away. However, she left them with a final lesson, urging Bloom and her friends to make peace with their emotions to unlock their true magic potential. After imparting this wisdom, Dowling and Bloom had a private conversation in the storage room, where Bloom shared her concerns about controlling her magical powers. Dowling reassured her, advising her to focus on saving her own world rather than the entire world. They shared a heartfelt hug before Dowling slowly faded away. Meanwhile, Flora and Musa rushed back to the dormitory upon hearing that Bavani had discovered Blue had escaped confinement. On the other place, the specialists had raided Sebastian's house but found no one inside, suspecting that a blood witch had learned of their attack plan. Back at Alfia, Beatrix had secretly colluded with Sebastian and aided him in infiltrating the school. She used her magic to disrupt all of Alfia's electrical power, enabling Sebastian to summon thousands of scrapers to attack the fairies. When Musa and Flora approached the dorm room and noticed that the door was open, 
Flora volunteered to check inside first in case Sebastian was lurking there. Beatrix, who had accompanied Sebastian, patrolled the hallways to see if any other fairies were around. Despite spotting Musa hiding in the corridor, Beatrix didn't alert Sebastian. On another occasion, all the specialists gathered outside the storage room where Bloom was held. She showed Silva a recording made by Musa, revealing a blood witch's actions with Bavani in the basement. They discussed a plan to counter the blood witches and Blue disclosed Sebastian's goal of acquiring the power of the dragon flame. Shigam considered surrendering her power to return the magic to all the fairies. Stilva disagreed, fearing that Sebastian would become even more greedy and seek to absorb the magic of other fairies. Meanwhile, in prison, Sky finally managed to escape by incapacitating a blood witch who had unlocked the confinement cell door. Upon his escape, he encountered Beatrix questioning Sebastian about his motives for infiltrating Alfia. However, Sebastian refused to provide answers, prompting Beatrix to take an ancient book to uncover Sebastian's true intentions herself. In the storage room, Bloom, Aisha, Stella, and Tara discussed their plan to infiltrate the school, which was now under the control of the Blood Witches. During their conversation, Bloom suddenly had a vision. She saw Sebastian attempting to enter a portal to a dark world, where menacing creatures would attack Alfia. After the vision, Musa, who was trapped in the dormitory, called Bloom and vowed to save Flora before the Blood Witches could train her magic. Musa armed herself with a staff, ready to defend against the Blood Witches until they could rescue Flora. Meanwhile, Skye had joined the other specialists under Silva's command. They were forced to retreat and wait for the Solaria troops to arrive. Skye managed to contact Bloom, but Sebastian took control of his phone and threatened to kill Skye, who was now his hostage. Sebastian ordered Bloom to leave her hiding place and follow Grey, who was waiting for her. Fearing for Skye's safety, Bloom dropped her phone and complied with Sebastian's demand, going with Grey. Later on, Stella received a message from Bloom and went to the forest in search of her. However, she couldn't locate Bloom until she was startled by Beatrix's presence. Stella, annoyed with Beatrix for aiding the Blood Witches in infiltrating Alfia, put on an angry expression. Beatrix asked Stella not to misunderstand her visit to the forest and showed her an ancient royal book. She explained Sebastian's plan to restore Asterdell and the method to summon entities from the Dark Realm that could bring the dead back to life. To accomplish all this, Sebastian needed the Dragon Flame, which was why Beatrix asked for Stella's help especially since Sky was now held hostage by the Blood Witches. Stella appeared hesitant, but Beatrix tried to convince her by saying she was like Bloom, who didn't know her past. Bloom then expressed her anger towards Grey for betraying Aisha. Grey explained that he had feelings for Aisha, but also wanted to bring his family back to life. As they entered a room, Bloom saw Sky unconscious and bound to the ceiling. Sebastian immediately asked her to channel her magic into the Convergence Crystal he had taken from the dormitory. Meanwhile, in the Specialist's hideout, Tara learned that her friends were fighting an Alfia. She urged everyone to move without waiting for the Solaria troops. Later, Flora successfully created a potion to eliminate the Scrapers. She intentionally lured dozens of these creatures to attack her and injected the potion into her arm, causing the Scrapers to die. Musa, surprised by Flora's actions, left her to join the other specialists, as instructed earlier. On the other hand, Aisha, Stella, and Tara proceeded into the school, where Sebastian had almost absorbed all of Bloom's dragon flaying powers. Unfortunately, Beatrix arrived and disrupted the flow of magic, freeing Sky from his restraints and shattering the crystal Sebastian held. In a fit of rage, Sebastian killed Beatrix by slamming her against the wall. Aisha and the others arrived just in time, while Bloom unleashed her fire magic, frightening Sebastian. He taunted Bloom, claiming that her friends would meet the same fate as Beatrix. Stella rushed to Beatrix's lifeless body and together with Aisha and Tara, they attacked Sebastian with their true magic. Bloom reabsorbed her magic from the crystal and joined her friends in defeating Sebastian. Simultaneously with Sebastian's demise, all the fairies and specialists who had lost their powers regained their abilities. Bloom was overjoyed to see Sky wake up, but she had another vision of a dark figure coming to Alfia. She decided to investigate this further and search for information in the ancient royal book. After collecting various details, she believed that her vision was a sign for her to journey to the dark realm. Bloom then wrote a farewell letter to her friends and Sky before heading to the Sanctum to enter the portal. Just as she was about to step through, Sky arrived seeking an explanation. Bloom clarified that her presence in Alfie was a danger to others, so she needed to search for her mother. Sky hugged her one last time and she waved goodbye before entering the portal. The next morning, Aisha and her friends read Bloom's farewell letter, bringing tears to their eyes. Towards the end of the series, Aisha was still grieving over Bloom's departure and was comforted by Grey. Musa, who had struggled with her magic, decided to become a specialist, while Stella visited Beatrix's grave to leave a flower. As Stella left, the flower wilted and a dark figure appeared next to Beatrix's grave. 
Meanwhile, Bloom had entered the Dark Realm and encountered a red-haired woman with her back turned, 